Am I the only one that's feeling this like mint green shirt right now? Probably. But what's going on, peeps? And welcome back to this week's video. I'm in a weird mood today and I don't know why. But today, it's very exciting. Number one, we're only a couple days away from Playlist Live DC. If you live in that area or you are able to travel to that area, you better get a ticket and come hang out with me. Number two, we're making yet another dessert. I'm sure you're all ecstatic about that one. As of this second, the newest video on Tasty's channel is this pretzel chocolate pie, and it is one of my favorite flavor combinations. Those chocolate covered pretzels that you buy in those little aluminum bags in the grocery store, ooh, it's just delicious stuff. So I couldn't help myself but to try to make it today. I'm praying to the sweet heavens above that this one will not let me down, so let's get right into it. All right guys, so although this recipe looks pretty simple, there is quite a few ingredients that you're gonna need to make it. And you're gonna start out with some white sugar, whatever kind of pretzels that you like, some bittersweet chocolate, some brown sugar, salt, vanilla extract, cornstarch, eggs, a whole stick of butter, and a lemon. The first step in creating this pie is to basically assemble the pretzel crust. And of course for that, you're gonna need a bunch of pretzels. So I threw a couple cups of these gem pretzels into a bag and then beat the heck out of them. I found that hitting it with my hand got me almost nowhere and it actually felt like it started to cut me. So I switched over to a rolling pin and thankfully that worked much better. Once you've got your pretzels all crushed up, you're going to take those out of the bag, throw them into a bowl, then add in eight tablespoons or an entire stick of melted butter and a third cup of brown sugar. With a spoon, you're gonna mix that all thoroughly together so that all the pretzels get a nice coating in the butter. Now what we have to do is grab a glass pie tray and I'd say fill it up about halfway. Then you're going to squish down the middle so it's nice and packed while making the crust around the outside. I threw it into a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes and it came out looking pretty good. There's not any noticeable change but to the touch you could definitely feel how it kind of mended together more and it's going to make a good crust. Now we got to get to the best part of this which is the filling. So on my stove top in a nice big pot I threw together a quarter cup of cornstarch, one and a half cups of your sugar, a quarter teaspoon of salt and mix that all together with my whisk. At which point I added four egg yolks. I used the same sucking technique as I did last week. And then three cups of milk. You're gonna set that over medium heat for about six to eight minutes or until it thickens up and becomes like a custard like this. Make sure you're mixing it throughout this entire process or else it'll clump together and start to burn on the bottom. And this seems about perfect. So I took it off of the heat and got it prepared to add in our last few ingredients. Those are going to be 7 ounces of your bittersweet chocolate, 2 teaspoons of vanilla extract, 2 tablespoons of butter, and then 2 tablespoons of lemon juice. Yes, I thought that that was as weird as you guys do. But I just mixed that all together until all the butter and the chocolate melted down. And I think that this looks spot on. The last step in making this is to pour your pudding into your crust all the way up to the top, make sure it's nice and smooth, and then throw it into the fridge for three to four hours. Yes, I know it's painful to wait, but you gotta do it. After that time, I took it out of the fridge and attempted to get a decent slice out of this thing, but eventually I did and plated it up nice with some cocoa powder, some powdered sugar, a little bit of whipped cream. If I had to guess now, there is just no possible way that this is not gonna be a winner. See, my first instinct with stuff like this is that there's no way it could taste bad. But there's been times where I thought that before and it didn't end up tasting the best. So I'm not gonna say that this time. That landed on my pants. It's not what I was expecting. My first complaint is that the crust got really soggy. Maybe I should have kept it in the oven for a little bit longer or broiled it for a minute, I don't know, but the whole bottom got like a little on the softer side. I really wanted like a crunch. Also, I don't know how this is feasible. I've never said that word in my life. There's a distinct like coffee flavor in it. It tastes like it has that espresso powder or some, some type of, some form of coffee in it. I also don't know how I feel about the whole like kind of sweet but a hint of sour lemon in it. If I were to make this again, I would just take that out. It's not bad, but it's not fantastic. Uh, I'll give it a 
five and a half out of ten. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's recipe. If you did, smash a like on this one for me. Last week, I asked how quickly we could hit 5,000, and you hit it in less than a day. So let's see if we could hit 5,500 in a day. That is going to be a challenge. And as always, if you guys have more suggestions for recipes that I haven't tried yet, leave them right down in the comments for me. Have an absolutely awesome Friday and Saturday, and I will see you right back here on Sunday. Peace.